there and welcome to another exciting edition of Hair of the Dog on VLP TV, that Villa La Paz Cage Free Pet Resort and Spa. I'm the top dog, Eileen Proctor, here again with, by popular demand, Michelle Watkins. And Michelle is a groomer at Villa La Paz on Shea. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. We are here today to talk about something that I know a lot of people have been asking you about, and that is. What is up with all this matting, this matting that's going on? It's like our dogs have clumps all over them. And uh, you know what I'm talking about, sure right? Do. Okay, because you deal with it every day. Yes. So tell us, what exactly is a mat? Is there a definition? Uh, there is. A mat is where the hair becomes entangled in itself. Um, and if it's left alone, it will just get tighter and tighter, um, becomes a huge knot. And you, you pretty much are, it's almost impossible to get it out if you let it go too long. So, are certain breeds of dogs more predisposed to having mats than others? They are. So, what types would we expect to find? Most of your non shedding breeds Shih Tzus, Wheatons, um, say Old English Sheep Dogs, a lot of those dogs that their hair is not shedding, that they need haircuts and it grows because that hair doesn't. It doesn't stop growing. It, it gets longer and then it gets tangled in itself as opposed to a short haired dog like a lab, they're constantly shedding. Gotcha. And it's not long enough to tangle. Right. So those of you that have got the non-shedding dogs, this is specifically for you, but don't press the off button, those of you with short haired dogs, because you're going to get some interesting information as well, right, Michelle? That's right. Great. So what actually causes this happen, this matting to happen? It can be infrequent brushing, it can be um, swimming in a pool and not being brushed afterwards, being wet and not being brushed. Right. We discussed that in a previous episode. Yeah, that we? definitely causes matting. Um, the hair just gets tangled in itself and then it dries that way and then it, it doesn't come out. Um, the most the most common cause though is is not frequent enough brushing not frequent enough brushing And so if we're not doing it on our own taking them in to get brushed on a regular basis to a professional groomer is probably a good idea Sure, isn't that more than just unsightly? I mean does it bother the dog at all? Absolutely. They like I said they do get tight What happens is the tighter that they get the closer to the skin they get and the more they pull on the skin if you ever have it, it's like a girl with a, with a ponytail. If you have a ponytail that's too tight, when you do take it out, the hit, your skin's almost uh, painful and it itches. Right. So that's kind of what a mat does. It pulls on the skin, so then when it is released, that skin's released, it does cause a lot of discomfort and itching. Of the so, skin. That's, so that could be why a dog is scratching its ears or yeah. something, because mats do get behind the it's ears. It's pulling the skin. Wow, so it's a painful situation. Most people do not realize that matting is actually painful. They just think it's unsightly and they don't like the way it looks, but most people don't understand that it actually does hurt to have a mat. So I have to ask you a question because you grew my golden retriever, Cassie, and I get told often that she's packed. Is that, a, is that the same thing as mat? No, it's, it's actually completely different. That's where the short hair breeds have their own problem. The, the longer haired, non-shedding, have matting. The breeds like the Goldens, Huskies, all of those dogs, they have the double coat, they get packed. And that is where the fur doesn't actually come out. You know all that coat that you see, those little, where you can pull them and they kind I of... I call them little dust puppies. Yeah. Is that what you're... Okay. Yes. Those, that's that's where the hair doesn't doesn't shed off. It kind of stays in there and it just builds up and those gets packed. Those big Yep. They make them look real fluffy, but it's just dead <laughs> coat on Right. There. It needs to come out. Gotcha. So, oh, well, good. Thank God I'm not a bad mom and she's not matting it. She's a victim no. of her breed. <laughs> right. And I don't brush enough. I have to admit that. <laughs> okay. Brushing will help it. It will. Yeah. So it will help it. Brushing is going to help both matting and packing. Yes. Why don't you tell us the types of tools that we would use to help keep our dogs mat free or okay. pack free? Okay. Most um, most breeds you're gonna you're gonna want to start with a slicker brush, and it's kind of like the one that a lot of people are actually afraid of it because the way it looks. Mm -hmm. um, it, it actually is the best brush to to get through their coat. It's not as you, hard as it looks. It's not, but you do need to be careful as far as how hard you push. Right. Um, you don't want to push too hard with it. You just kind of want a nice light strokes through the coat. You also don't want to go over the same area too many times because then it, it, it causes brush burn. And that's basically where you're, you're, you're burning the skin 
by going over it too many times right. with the metal bristles. I, I imagine that could be very painful as well. Sure, it yeah. can be. So you want to start with a slicker brush. That's the most common and easiest brush to use as far as it's, it's the most effective. And where can we get a brush like this? At any pet store. Any pet store, so Choice Pet or any of the sure. regular ones. And I imagine that there are different grades of these. That there professionals are. Professionals have even better grades of these slicker brushes. Yeah. But this would be something you'd just get at any supply store. Yep. Okay. Get and ahead. they're fairly inexpensive. Good. Um, but that's going to be your best tool. You want to start off with this, and you always want to follow with a comb. Always want a comb. And these, the same thing. You can pick them up pretty much anywhere. The reason you want to follow with a comb is because most pet owners surface brush. And that's oh, what we just call the very it. top. Yeah, and they think they're brushing the dog out, and they'll tell me, I brush my dog every other day. I don't understand why it's matted. Well, it's because you're only getting the top layer. You have to actually get all the way through the coat. Right. So we say to start with a slicker, fall through with a comb. If you can go through the entire coat with a comb, that's when they're brushed out. And then you have another interesting little item here. What, what actually is this? This looks a little scary. It does. Um, and that's why I brought it in because that is actually a mat breaker. And basically what this is, is on the, this, the curved end here, they're actually like a little blade. Mm -hmm. um, you don't ever touch the skin with it. You literally just kind of take it like it's, the mat is here and you just kind of do this. Basically what this does is it's going to cut through the hair to kind of break it apart so that it's easy to brush out. Gotcha. That's, that's one of the ways you can get rid of a mat if it's not too severe. Right. If your dog has one or two mats, you can kind of use a mat breaker and just kind of break it up a little bit and then brush it out. Great. You know, this all sounds great in theory. I think that we should kind of see how you do it. Could we ask a dog to come in here sure. and model for Absolutely. us? Absolutely. Who, who would we call in? Hazel, how about you? 